Hello and welcome to today's lesson here at the Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Good evening, disciples of Christ. It is again a pleasure to be able to come and study God's Word with you for a few moments. We ask that you have get your Bibles and turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and we pray and trust that God will direct our attention from verses 12 through 26 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 through 26 out of the Word of God the church Paul's address to the church of Corinth giving instructions to the church of Corinth from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 through 26 and for a few moments this evening for our study we are going to look at biblically the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of believers the body and its many members in accordance with God's holy word God's holy word is in errant infallible irrefutable truth the word of God what God says about the body you ought to be at 1st Corinthians chapter 12 and again we will begin from verses 12 through 26 now I want us to understand as we look at these passages of Scripture out of 1st Corinthians chapter 12 the body of Christ the body of Christ refers to individuals who are believers in Jesus Christ. Now these individuals who are believers in Jesus Christ must understand that Jesus Christ is the head of the body and the individual members make up the body. It is important because as we look, as we look at this lesson, as we go through it, for Christians, those who are part of the body of Christ, first and foremost, most, we have to understand Jesus Christ alone is the head of the body. Jesus alone. We're going to look at the members and those of us who are the individuals who make up the body. But in this makeup of our body, Jesus Christ is the head. The body of Christ is known as the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia. The Ecclesia is the Christian church. Now understand, remember, we're looking at the biblical model, the biblical pattern, the biblical way of the body of, of, body of Christ. The Ecclesia, not the world's way. Not what man says. Not what has been formulated by the ideologies and the thoughts of man. But what the Bible says about the body of Christ, the Ecclesia, the Christian church. The Ecclesia, the Christian church, is comprised of all Christians and does not refer to a particular Christian denomination. Again, we're looking at this biblically and we're asking the Lord to give us understanding because there are those who put so much into a denomination rather than understanding if we are part of the body of Christ, the ecclesia, this does not refer to a particular Christian denomination. I am Pastor Anthony Williams. I pastor the Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. But that Baptist in the church actually means nothing. I am a Christian. I'm asked quite often, what are you? And when people ask me that, my reference is, I'm a Christian. Yeah, what what church, what type of church you attend? And I give them the name of the church, Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. But it's not the denomination. It's the Christ I'm a Christian, Christianity. And so don't hang your hat on a denomination. Denomination is just a religious means to denote 
that particular church that you attend. But just as we are well aware, religious, just being religious will send you to hell as well as basing your, 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 your thoughts and your belief and, and hold, being hung up on a denomination. That's a dangerous thing. The Christian church is not a particular Christian denomination, but rather the, but rather the body or group of believers who are a body and group of believers that believe in Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you believe that Jesus Christ gave his life, that he went to Calvary's cross, he went to the grave, to the tomb, he physically died, but he rose again from physical death. And he rose with power, all power. And now he has ascended to be back with God the Father, seated or standing on the right hand of God the Father, interceding for those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ. I don't care if you attend a Lutheran church, Episcopalian church, a Methodist church, a Baptist church, Church of God in Christ, Church of God, Presbyterian, I don't care. If those are what I just ran down, if you believe in Jesus in such a way, you are my brother and sister in Christ. A denomination has nothing to do with it. And that, that has caused so much schism. And this is what we're going to see when we look at in verses 12 through 26 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We are the Ecclesia, a group of of believers who believe in Jesus Christ. The attributes of the body of Christ, the ecclesia, the Christian church are being one, being holy, which being a Catholic church, now not like the Catholic church, the Roman Catholic church, the Catholic church, that means the universal church, the whole church, the church that's made up of black individuals, white individuals, Asian individuals, Latino individuals, whatever particular race that you are, the whole universal Catholic church, that's what that's talking about, not the Roman Catholic, the Catholic, the universal, the whole church from different parts, different races and people from throughout the world who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So the attributes again, being one, being holy, being universal or the whole or the Catholic church. And lastly, the apostolic church. The apostolic just simply means those men of God who have been, have been ordained to minister the word of God. The men of God who have been ordained by the power and authority of God through his Holy Spirit to minister in the preaching of the gospel of the word of God, the logos, the, the, the word that applies to Jesus Christ. That's the apostolic church. A person having a title ap apostle is just a messenger. There's nothing supernatural about that. People, again, they get, up, get caught up in denominations. They get caught up in titles. What we are as part of the body of Christ, we're going to look at this with servants. You better understand as being a part of the ecclesia, the Christian church, the body of Christ, we are mere servants who serve Jesus Christ. Remember, we refer, refer back to who is the head? Jesus Christ. He is the, is the head. We say here, greater friendship. There are no big eyes. There are no little U's. And for anyone who think that they're running things, that they're in control, you're completely out of place. There's only one head in the body of Christ. That's Jesus Christ. And so we are servants that are made up of one who are holy, the Catholic Church, the universal whole church, and the apostolic church. Those, again, men of God who have been ordained in the ministering of the word of God. The body of Christ, catch this, is not an organization 
The body of Christ is a living organism. An organization is something that's from a business perspective or that's handled from a social standpoint or from association. You have so associations. We are the body of Christ. We are a living spiritual organism, not organization. Never refer to the body of Christ as an organization. What, what, what does you, someone poses a question, what does your organization believe? Well, first of all, correct them. We are a living organism. We are the body of Christ. We are not an organization. We are not a society. We are not an association. We are not a business. We are about the Father's business, which is serving God, but we do not wear the title of a business. We are the body of Christ, a spiritual living organism. For the body of Christ to serve properly, to serve properly, every member must, it's not optional, must do their service in a harmonious spirit of cooperation with the other members. Man, you want to know why churches have so much, I'm talking about the Christian church, so many problems. There is not a harmonious spirit of cooperation amongst those who say they're part of the body of Christ. To, to properly serve and to properly glorify God and edify the body, whatever gift or placement God has put you in in the body of Christ, it has to be done in a harmonious way. Remember all this because I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through these passages of scripture and what I'm saying now should align and make sense to you as we look from the, from the scriptural perspective. But it has to be in harmony, beloved. Whatever we do, it's, it cannot be with attitude. Boy, it's one of the most sickening things to see people who say they are part of the body of Christ, the ecclesia, this Christian church, this living organism, but full of attitude. And I'm talking about negative attitude. If there is an attitude to be had, it ought to be a positive attitude. One that's glorifying God, that's, that's benefiting the body, not negative. That brings about discord. That doesn't bring harmony. That does not produce harmony amongst the other members. When harmony, and we're going to jump into these scriptures, and I hope you have your Bibles and keep your Bibles open for the next few moments because we're going to go through these scriptures. When harmony is disrupted in the Christian church, reproach is brought on the body of Christ, meaning disapproval and disappointment. You know why so many people are disappointed and disapprove of coming to God's house, coming to the church? Because they sense a lack of harmony. They sense schism. They sense hatred. They sense malice. They sense division. And so what that does is bring reproach, disapproval, disappointment upon the body of Christ. I tell you, as the body of Christ, one of the things that's so crazy, you have churches that try to outdo other churches. We're not in any competition. I said earlier, we're not a business. We're not an association. We're not an organization. We're part of the body of Christ. If a church that's gathering together in the name of Jesus is glorifying Christ, I'm, I'm, all, I'm praying for that church. You know, my choir is not to be looked upon as my choir can outdo your choir. Or as the pastor, I can outpreach your pastor. That is the most ridiculous thing. And churches are in, 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 in competition. What? If we are who we say we are, we believe what we believe, Jesus Christ has given us the victory, and we didn't have to do one thing. So the victory is not of us. So what are we competing for? When he has paid the price, Jesus has paid it all. All to him we owe. And it kills me. I, I've heard it said here in Chattanooga, you got five-star preachers. You got four-star preachers. You got three-star preachers. You got two-star. If a preacher is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and glorifying Jesus, he is a man of God, ordained of God. That's the apostolic church. One friend preacher, that does not impress Christ. <laughs> he is the word. 
And so I say all this because I want in this day where so much division is taking place, in this day where so much schism is taking place, in this day where it's such a lack of harmony amongst the body of believers, the ecclesia, the Christian church, there ought to be harmony. There ought to be peace. There ought to be love. There ought to be togetherness. There ought to be unity amongst the body of believers. How do we go there? Notice in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The body says, the word of God says, for as the body. And it's just going to reiterate what I've already covered. For as the body is one and have many members and all the members of that one body being many or one body. So also is Christ, meaning in perfect harmony with Christ. If the members, which are many, understand who they are in the body of Christ, Christ is the head. There is that oneness. There's that holy, holiness. There's that university. There's that whole, the apostolic teaching from the word of God. It all comes together as the body. This living organism, not organization, is one. And had many members, many members. Everybody who says they're part of the body, catch this. It says, has many members. It doesn't say all, has many members. Everybody who says they're part of this body is not. They will show by their actions. They will show by their negative attitude. They will show by the schism that they bring to the body, by their lack of harmony. But the members who God has given understanding from the word of God that we are one and have many members and all the members of, of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ. He is the head and there's harmony. Look at, verse, look at verse 13. For by one spirit, not many spirits, by one spirit, that's Jesus' spirit, the spirit of God, by one spirit are we all, that's the many members, are we all baptized, immersed into one body? This is not talking about water baptism. So many have been baptized with water, but they were never saved. A lot of people get angry with me because I won't baptize a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old. They have to be taught. The Bible says train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart. So many people who are adults now who were water baptized but don't understand anything or have no knowledge of who Christ is, what salvation is of Christ. You know, you have to first learn of Christ. Be taught. This is talking about being immersed by the Holy Spirit. Not water baptism. Water baptism does not save. The Spirit of Christ, if one is immersed in the Spirit, that's what salvation comes because, because the Holy Spirit will convict that individual when they got the wrong attitude, when they're saying something they should not say, or acting a certain way. If the Holy Spirit, if He dwells within that member, He will do surgery on that member and bring that member back in the right proper relationship in glorifying God and edifying the body for by one spirit the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God are we all baptized immersed into not two bodies one body whether we be Jews this is that Catholic Church the whole church Jews or Gentiles black white Asian Hispanic, Latino, it doesn't matter. If the Spirit of Christ has drawn you and brought you in, whether you be Jew or Gentile, whether you be bond or free, and have been and have been all made to drink into one spirit, that comes by the Holy Spirit. That whether you rich, have millions of dollars, or you're a pauper, don't have but a nickel in your pocket. You know, the Holy Spirit, he says, the poor I will have with you always. So there are those who of us who will be poor financially, but our, our Father is rich in heaven. The cattle on a thousand hill belongs to the Lord. He says in, in John 14, in my Father's house are many mansions. And he's talking to, he's saying this to the body of believers. So in spiritually, we're rich. 
physically, materialistic from the world standpoint, we might not have much. But that does not keep us from being saved. The Holy Spirit saved whom he will. The Bible says the wind listens where it will. The wind, the Holy Spirit goes and connects and draws whom he will connect and draw. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Catch verse 14. For the body is not one member, <laughs> but many. That's talking about the ecclesia. So how does a person think it's all about them? The body is not one member. As the pastor of Greater Friendship, I know it's not about me. Greater Friendship is going on 132 years. I'm not 132 years old. So it's no way I can think about, think that greater friendship revolves around Anthony Williams. I'm just a servant. I will, God has had me here over five years now. Not 132 years. So it cannot be about me. I'm just grateful to serve in the capacity that the Lord will have me to serve in. That's the mindset that the members of the body think. We're just grateful to be servants in whatever capacity that God would have us to serve. Look, he says, for the body is not one member, but many. I tell my church all the time, I need my deacons. I need my ushers. I need my music ministry. I need my finance ministry. I need my youth ministry. I need the, the mother's ministry. I need the different ones in the different capacities that they serve in. You'll need it in this hour. We're going to look at this scripturally. That's why I say keep your Bibles on me. Keep your word. Keep the word on. Let's look at this from a scriptural standpoint, not from man's standpoint, not from man's ideology or man's thoughts. Let's see what the word of God says. Again, verse 14 says, for the body is not one member, but many. Verse 15, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it Therefore, not of the body. Now you look at your hand and feet. If your foot says that because your foot is not the hand, then your foot is not a part of your body. That makes absolutely positively no sense. If your foot is a part of your body, your hand is a part of your body, those are members of your body that makes up your body. So your foot is just as important as the hand. Serve in a different capacity does a different function, but it's important. I mean, it's just made, I, we say all the time here at Greater Friendship, you gotta be thinkers and rememberers. Think what the script, this is posing a question. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Make you think, look at verse 16. If the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Think. Body of Christ. Think. Ecclesia. Think. Christians. Think. Living organism. What part does God have you? We get ready to see that. Where does he set you? And whatever area, whatever part of the body he set you in, serve to the glory of God. And serve to edify the body. And know, know that it's not about you. It's not about me. Christ Jesus is the head. Notice. If, verse 17. If the whole body were an eye. It's making us think, saints. If the whole body were an eye. Where were the hearing? <laughs> if the whole were hearing. Where were the smelling? One body, just one big eye, then you can't hear. One big ear, then you can't smell. There's a necessity for every part of the body. Notice, I love the word of God. Look at verse 18. But now, talking about the body, ecclesia, in this divisive world, in this world full of schism, in this world full of lack of harmony, but now, I'm talking to the body of believers. I'm talking to the ecclesia. I'm talking to the Christian church. But now, have God, do you believe in God? I'm talking about the God of the Bible. I'm talking about the God of the Bible. I'm talking about the God of the children of Israel who delivered the children of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh who led, sent Moses, 
the man of God to lead them to the promised land. And after Moses could only go so far because he had struck the rock, Joshua took them on. The man of God, Joshua, took them on into the promised land. And Jesus Christ, that's the physical promised land. And Jesus Christ himself descended to take his body of believers over to the promised land in glory. It's all of Christ. Look what it says. But now have God set that little three-letter word, S-E-T, God placed the members, every one of them, in the body. Catch this. As it had pleased him. <laughs> God did it. You know, if God, and God knows what he does, what he's doing. He places the ear where the ear is supposed to be. He places the nose where the nose is supposed to be. He places the mouth where the mouth is supposed to be. He said it as it pleased him. And then so many people get mad at this person. And I love to see, I tell my church, I don't get upset when the body is not doing. When the body is doing, I, you, I, you, and to the glory of God, and that's a specific. When the body is doing to the glory of God and edifying the body, I'm not going to micromanage you. Go for it. What gets me disturbed is when you say you're part of the body and you don't do. Because the ear, the eyes, the mouth, the nose, they are functioning. They're, they're doing what they're supposed to do to enhance the body, to keep the body strong. How can you say you're a part of the body, but you don't do? And then you do wrong. It's no way. When something is wrong, it has to be corrected. That's a diagnosis in your body. When you have an ailment in your body, you go to the doctor physically, to be diagnosed with what the ailment is for it to be corrected so your body will physically act with harmony and the same thing is applicable to the spiritual body when something is out of norm it has to be corrected and, and, and the body the body has to have discipline people can't just do what they want to do it has to be done the way the Lord please how the Lord has said, and that is according to the apostolic church, the ministry of the word of God is done through that way. Remember, four things. One, the body is holy. The body is Catholic, which is universal. Hold the body is and apostolic, which is the ministry of the word of God by the man of God to enhance and nurture and strengthen the body of God. Jesus says to Peter, lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. Peter, lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. Peter, lovest thou me? Feed my lambs. That's the small as well as the big. The body, the body, as God has pleased, as it has pleased him, he has sent every member, every one of them in the body. God did it. I tell my church all the time, it's not an arrogant statement. I've been here going, it's over five years. And I know church protocol, take a vote, this and that, blah. But I'm not here at Greater Friendship off a vote. I'm here because the Lord sent me here five years ago as it pleased him. Well, you understand that, that it's the Lord who does it. That's why people get all bent out of shape because they do what pleases them. But ask, what is it that the Lord has done that pleases the Lord? In the beginning, verse 18, and I'm finished. I wanted to drive that point home because the rest it, 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 it centers around and is explanatory. It says, but now have God set the members, every one of them in the body as it had pleased him. Him, God. Verse 19. And if they were all one member, well, where were the body? Again, the word of God is making us think. Verse 20. But now, here we go now, present. But now are they many members, <laughs> yet but one body. Many members, yet but one body, operating under the authority of Jesus Christ. Whether you be a preacher, you preach under the authority of Jesus Christ. A deacon, you serve under the authority of Jesus Christ. Ushers, you, you serve as, under the authority of Jesus Christ. Music ministry, you minister in music under the authority of Jesus Christ. Not the authority of yourself. Because going back over there, the body is not one member, but many. 
And here again it says, but now, verse 20, are they many members yet but one body in harmony? Verse 21, and the eye, catch this, cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. <laughs> Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Every part of the body, there's a necessity. Catch these last few verses. Nay, verse 22. Much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble or weak are necessary. <laughs> I don't care how small of a, a part that that member appears to play or serve in, they are necessary. The smallest, what, whatever servitude a person does in the body, and it might not be noticed by many, that part of the body is just as important. The ushers are just as important as the deacons. The music ministry is just as important as the youth ministry. There are no big eyes, no little U's. Every part of the body, there is a necessity as far as the harmony in within the body, the ecclesia, the Christian church. Verse 22 again. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to which seem, which appear to be more weak and feeble, thank God, are necessary. Here in Greater Friendship, whatever capacity you serve in, you are needed. You're necessary. You are important. I don't care from what perspective the world say, oh, that's a small part. You are necessary and just as important. Look at verse 23. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. We honor, we honor individuals here at Greater Friendship. And you hear people say, oh, Pastor, no, 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 no. It's honorable to honor those who diligently serve within the body to glorify God and to enhance the body. We had a beautiful graduation celebration this past Sunday. And I'm gonna mention it to the church, I'm gonna say it today. So the Valerie Poindexter did an excellent job and it was necessary. And I thank God for her servitude and what she brought as far as the college ministry. It's very important. Only one time a year that it's recognized out of 365 days. But just that one time was necessary. And it was done so adequately to the glory of God. Those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, verse 23 says, upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts uh, the, uh, those parts that seem to be unpresentable. Our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Mean they they are they're modest, but they are beautiful. <laughs> they're beautiful. Every part of the body of Christ, whatever area you serve in, and you serving with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your energy, is beautiful. I don't care. Who says it's not important? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. In verse 24, 25, 26, check this out. For our comely parts, our presentable parts, have no need. That's those people who want recognition. That's those who want to stand out. That's those who want to be looked upon. They do things to be acknowledged. Notice the Bible says, our comely parts have no need, simply put. There's one phrase in there, kill, kill. they have no need, they're not necessary. Because it's all about them. If anybody makes anything about them, they're not that important. You're impotent. Not important, you're impotent. You have no power. Notice what he says, for our comely parts have no need, but God, verse 24, have tempered or composed the body together, God did that, placed together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lack. Oh, I love the word of God. That's why I tell you, keep your Bibles on. That, that seems insignificant, that person that seems insignificant, you're very significant in God's house. God, the Bible says, Jesus was hung around the low, the base, the lowly, servants, 
It ain't about, I told you, it's not about a title. People want to run right here, think bishop is more of an important title than a pastor. It means the same. The Bible said he's giving some bishop, some pastors, some teachers, some evangelists. And the church world has gone crazy thinking that, oh, that's bishop such and such. Guess who's the bishop of greater friendship? Pastor Anthony Williams. Because bishop and pastor is the same thing, servant. But when you look at it from a world standpoint, people want to put tags and titles on them and make person more comely than they are. Where well, my Bible tells, there ain't no need for them. <laughs> and they will get their reward here on, he on earth, not in heaven. Notice what it says as I get out of here. Again, verse 24. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered or composed the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Verse 25, 26. That there should be no... Catch this. Lord, have mercy, Jesus Christ. That there should be no schism. That means division. Yeah, I said it earlier. If you are causing schism, division, you're out of harmony. And if you're continually doing that, you're not a part of the body. Point blank. Because especially if you can't be corrected, you cannot be correct. You cannot, your diagnosis does not correct you. Notice what again, it says that there should be no, no means no, absolutely none. No schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care. Oh my God. I love Bible teaching. I love biblical teaching. That's why we stick with the scriptures. That's why I tell you, get your Bible and follow me with the scripture because I'm not coming off a thousand miles. Mile. I'm not that intelligent. I'm not that smart. I'm not the orchestrator and the one who is the creator of the body. God is. And he knows how to put it together. And he has put it together. He said as he pleased. Notice again why I love the word. That there should be no schism division in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another verse 26 and whether one member suffer this is really this is cut and dry this is how it is amongst the body whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it or one member be honored thank you lord all the members rejoice with it you can't get no clearer than that if you believe the word of God as written, it's right there. You taking your physical body. When there's an ailment, it hurts your whole body. You can take a toothache. Until that toothache is corrected, your, your head starts to hurt. It seems like your, your pinky finger hurts. It seems like just your whole body. Until that tooth is corrected and taken care of, your body suffers. But then once that is capped off, or whatever's done need to be taken out or whatever and and it and, and, and you got harmony within that body <laughs> the whole body rejoices <laughs> and that's how the body of Christ is if there's a toothache in the body <laughs> and God removes that toothache, toothache out of the body rather than whine and complain better be grateful when God gives Pleasure and harmony and peace and joy within that body. I, I rejoice with the body of Christ. I thank God to be a part of the ecclesia, the Christian church, the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is head. And we say here at Greater Friendship, we're one body, yet many members. Jesus Christ is Lord. Pray with me. Father, I thank you for your word that was taught out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I pray, Lord, that your lesson, your word, has been made clear to the ecclesia, the body of Christ, the Christian church. And I pray, Lord, that wherever correction needed to be done as far as bringing harmony amongst the, the members in the body of believers, correct, even if it starts with me as the pastor, Correct me, Lord. Correct me that I might be an enhancement to the body of Christ, not a distraction or one who brings about schism or division. 
or a negative attitude. It's all about the positivity of Christ. And as the members, whatever servitude, whatever member does, I don't care how uncomely it appears, it's necessary in the body of Christ. Thank you for that revelation of truth that every part of the body is so important. We are a living organism and we are alive in Jesus Christ by the quickening power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word. Thank you for this time of study. We honor and bless the name of Jesus Christ concerning all things. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for attending today's teaching. We hope you received a blessed word here at the Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. We're located at 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Our pastor is Elder Anthony Williams. Our associate ministers are Dara Eisen and Ryan Rivers.